If you're brewing something hot or bubbling for something cold, this company wants to satisfy your liquid craving. Can they also quench investor thirst for a bankable beverage stock? What can you circle the wagons around in a really volatile environment like this one? Hey, how about a beverage company? Last year, Keurig Green Mountain, the popular single-serve coffee machine maker, bought Dr. Pepper Snapple, transformed itself overnight into a hot and cold powerhouse. Now, the combined company is still a subsidiary of Keurig's parent. That's the privately held JAB holding. But Keurig Dr. Pepper trades uh, publicly now under the symbol KDP. We recommended it shortly after the merger was announced, and the stock's been a huge winner. It's up almost 45% since the deal closed 13 months ago, including a near 12% gain year-to-date. Just last year, last week, they reported really an un- unbelievable quarter. Okay, it was a modest earnings beat, coupled with a tiny revenue miss, but coffee was on fire. Soda was a little subdued. We're going to find out about that. Management's still confident they can generate 2% sales growth for the full year. That would translate into 15 to 70% earnings worth. This is a consumer packaged goods company. If they can hit those numbers, I think the stock would have much more upside. So let's dig deeper with Bob Gamborth. He's the chairman and CEO of Keurig Dr. Pepper. Get a better sense of the quarter and his company's prospects. Now they've had a year to digest the merger. Mr. Gamborth, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a seat. There were so many dollars. When this thing came together and people said, you got to wait, there's a dividend, this or that. And we went all in because of you. You have an amazing history of reviving brands and making consumer packaged goods companies come alive. This was one of the toughest yet, but you're able to do it. Yes, yes. I mean, I think we've got a combination in this portfolio of brands that have been around for a long time. And we add new brands to it. So it's a combination of renovation and bringing new brands into our system. You're doing actual innovating. You're doing things with brands. There are other companies. I'm not going to pick on them, okay? There are other companies that just presume every year is going to be minus one. You don't presume that kind of thing. No, not at all. I I mean, I think uh, Dr. Pepper is a great example in itself. Limited edition, uh, like uh, Dark Berry that we've launched this year. Fantastic marketing behind Dr. Pepper, the college football championship that we right. take over every year. That drives growth in Dr. Pepper. And then a brand like Gin- uh, Canada Dry Ginger Ale. We've got about a 70 share of the ginger ale market. Canada Dry grew double-digit volume <laughs> last year. I found that to be unbelievable. Yeah. And you're adding all sorts of different flavors, and people love them. Canada Dry with Lemonade was one that we introduced last year that was part of that growth. Well, that's amazing. Now, the most incredible thing about it, I love the soda, but... How many houses? Is, how many households is this in? We are now in 28 million American households. It's, one it's fifth, up 20 percent over the past two years, and honestly, we feel like we we're still just getting started. Why we did everyone tell that. me it was tapped out, Bob? Why did everyone because say it was tapped out? They saw growth slow down, and they used the word saturation, which right. we've never used. And all it was was a a need for more innovation and good marketing, and that's exactly what we've done. Before I knew you were coming on. I said to my wife, wouldn't it be great to have a coffee pot during? Little did I know, because I hadn't done my work. Here it is. This and is, I went on Amazon. It's not there yet. But it everybody's going to get it. this week. What do you think? The, well, I can't ask you what the numbers would be. But this is obviously going to be something that includes a lot of people who were not, who environmentally felt that these were not right and who just missed the pot. Yeah, well, this is the K-Duo Brewer. There are three different models. We're introducing it for this holiday. We did work in 2016 when we took the company private to understand what were the barriers to new consumers coming into the Keurig system. And there were a bunch of them that we're addressing, but the number one barrier was, I don't want to give my pot up. Maybe I want it on the weekends or when a company comes over, but I still want to be able to do a single serve as well. And so we gave them exactly what they wanted. And the early read on this is very, very short. And then you gave my kids what they want. This is, they always say, well, you got to ask this guy the single serve, landfill, 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 but you've come up with something. Sustainability is a, is a big topic across the board. And we took that to heart first on the K-Cups. So all of Canada has been converted to recyclable K-Cups. And all of the U.S., which is in process of being converted now, will be converted by the end of next year. And we're just get, getting started. I mean, recyclable, uh, post-consumer recycled PET in all of our packaging, 30% by 2025. So it's part of a bigger program to make sure that our environmental footprint is sound. Well, I know from, my wife's on the board of Bucknell, and you were, I know from the way you have led your life, you care passionately about doing good things, sustainability. I want to ask you about our new theme here, which is impact per share, because this is something I've known you cared about all your life. What are you guys doing besides just making that to drive home that you understand what the new consumer wants in terms of the environment, in terms of the footprint? 
it starts with, it, and all of this is really listening to your consumer. And you have to listen to your consumer of all different ages. And we know, it's not a surprise, that younger consumers want healthier products right. and those products that have a much lower impact on the environment. So we just launched our Drink Well, Do, Do Good program, which we put on our website. It's all of our commitments to lower our impact, energy, water, solid waste, and packaging, recyclability, and sustainability as well. And we know the younger consumers. Right. You talk about Bucknell. Uh, I've spent a lot of time there as well. We know the students talk about that all the time. Yes, we do. have to do it. Now, uh, just a, just some things I want to ask you about. Uh, spike seltzer, alcohol. I know someone asked you about cannabis. I know when, if it, when it gets legal, you'll be interested. But it, 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 this is a phenomenon, the spike seltzer. Is that something that you should be thinking about? We're, we're in the non-alcoholic business. Okay. The distribution system that we built is a powerhouse for non-alcoholic okay. beverages, but it's a completely different distribution system for alcoholic beverages. But we launched a product called uh, Drinkworks, which is the first alcoholic beverage Keurig machine, but we did it in partnership with Anheuser-Busch okay. InBev, because they're the experts on that. We can develop the machines and we can develop the pods, but they are the ones who are gonna handle the alcohol beverages. Okay, system. now tariffs. They put it on these, raise the price a little bit. Obviously, you have some tariff issues here. How are you handling this uh, crazy world? Well, we're monitoring it very, very closely because it changes quite a bit. The biggest impact it would have would be on the machines. So we've been thinking about this for a while. We've diversified our supply base. So it used to be almost exclusively out of China. Now we've spread our distribution, our sourcing out of China. But if it were to hit in September as it's scheduled to, it's going to have a short-term financial impact uh, on us. We talked about 10 to $15 million on the call, but we believe we can mitigate that in 2020. People have to understand, that's actually not a lot of money for a big company. Like 10 to $15 million? Yeah. Not. Absolutely not. Now, uh, one last thing I, I wanted to ask you. Are you... Um, I want to go back to what it's obviously about craft times. I have to ask about mm. that. You are a turnaround specialist. Are, are there hope for dead brands? There's always hope for dead brands. Why? Look at look at what we did in the past, and, and you and I talked about Pinnacle Foods and a lot of those. Well, that's brands what I wanted to bring declared. up. What a success okay. you had there. And I think people have talked about carbonated soft drinks being dead. They're not. They're growing as well. It's about making sure that you renovate those brands, add new benefits to them, so that you make them contemporary and bring good marketing to it as well. Well, I just have to congratulate you. I, I went through all the research. People were starting with a cell, with a cell. They didn't know you. They didn't know Bob Gamble. That's what mattered. That's Bob Gamble. He's chairman and CEO of Keurig Dr. Pepper, KDP. We told you. They have money's back there for the brand. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.